Hi friends and welcome back to the channel. Today I am going to share with you how I actually come up with my meal plan for the week and how I find specific recipes that I'm interested in on websites such as Pinterest and YouTube. So if this is something that you're interested in, definitely stay tuned and I will share with you exactly what I do. And one thing that I want to mention is this is a good way if you are not really into meal planning yourself, you can definitely um, use the recipes that I have to make your meal plan for your family on a weekly basis. So let's just go ahead and get to the computer and show you exactly what I do. Okay, so when it comes to my meal planning, if I have no idea or I need inspiration for what I would like to cook for the upcoming week, I typically, typically will go to Pinterest and YouTube. So what I do is um, I have my boards here that I have made and I have, <clears throat> excuse me guys and I have like a weekly meal plan board here that is private for me so because if I was just doing this on my own and I had no idea this video would be extremely long so I already have pinned a few things that I would like to make this week and I do so based off what's in my freezer um, I know I said a couple weeks back that I was really gonna try to stop um, wasting food and rebuying food that I already have. So I have taken inventory of my deep freezer and I know that I have these items as far as the meat is concerned in the freezer. So the meals that I have in store for this, actually let me go back. So, so basically on the homepage of Pinterest, if I have ground turkey, I'll simply just type in um, ground turkey and allow the videos to pop up. Now, I will just scroll through them, see if anything catches my eye, um, and this is what I did, and I did find that this one over here caught my eye. One, because it's a pasta dish, I haven't cooked the pasta dish in a minute, and two, it looks like it is semi-healthy and not too much going on in the dish that would prevent my folks from eating it may have to make some modifications, but once I get into the ingredients, I'll take a look at that and adjust if I need to. Also, let's see here, I take a look up here just to see if anything like catches my eyes. If you didn't know, these are the most searched things in conjunction with ground turkey in order from left to right. So people are looking for ground turkey recipes, ground turkey recipes for dinner, ground turkey recipes healthy, and so on and so forth. So based off of that, because I've already done it, I've already gone through, and I will show you what I've pinned as far as my ground turkey. So let me just quickly go back over here to my boards, find my weekly meal plan board. And as you can see here, I have pinned the one pot penne pasta with turkey and spinach. And I also have a low carb Thai turkey lettuce wrap. Um, so I'm looking for things that are, one, I'm going to be able to use my stash that's in my freezer that is going to prevent me from going out and buying things that I already have, as well as cleaning out my freezer because it is full to the room. And then the, also the other two um, recipes that I have that I plan on making are some chicken recipes. Um, I usually get tired of chicken very quickly. However, I have it and I need to cook it and I just don't want plain grilled sauteed chicken. So I'm looking for something different. So the first chicken pot recipe that I'm thinking that I'm going to try is this pesto chicken tortellini and asparagus. Um, I don't have all these ingredients so I will have to actually go, by, go through the recipe and find those. And then the other is this baked Caesar chicken recipe here. So I think that I can modify these to my family's liking and see if we can try them out to see if this is something that I can make again or if I need to stay away from it. Y'all know what I'm talking about, these picky kids. If you don't have a picky kid or a picky husband, praise the Lord because they'll have you pulling your hair out. 
So that is how I start out on Pinterest. Now, say for say, say for instance, I were to go, let's see, to this um, baked Caesar chicken. And I looked at the recipe and the details of the recipe. And so a lot of times if I see something here and I'm like, eh, I don't really know if I agree with all of this. And I'm, this is just, um, just an actual like example of what I would do. So if I saw this and I'm like, oh, I don't really want to make sour cream or I don't really want to use the Caesar dressing or whatever, or you know what? Let me back up because this is not a good example for me to use. Let me go back. So usually I will do this in a recipe that I'm not comfortable with. And for, let's say, if I wanted, good example here, fried rice. Okay. I don't do Asian cuisine very often. And a lot of times... You know, I'm just like, I don't know what to do. And you know, when you're not from that area and you're not familiar with cooking, it, you don't know what types of shortcuts or substitutions that you may need or you may have in your possession already. So for something like this, and I'm not comfortable cooking, I will go to YouTube and I will find a fried chicken, fried uh, fried rice recipe okay and what I will do is typically I will look for uh, first an individual with a very large following and I usually try to be as authentic to that dish as possible so if it's an Asian dish I will try to find someone that has a YouTube channel with a large following that specializes in Asian dishes and typically, this will be someone that is of Asian um, descent. Same thing if I was going to do like an Indian recipe, it would be Asian descent, but maybe someone of um, Indian ethnicity. I will just do that because, you know, these are meals that they prepare all the time, and I want to see what they do in order to make their dishes good. So that's just a little side note of how to use Pinterest and YouTube together to get ideas for cooking dinner or, you know, weekday dinner ideas and how you may be able to get ingredients and utilize ingredients that you have as well as ingredients that you may have to go out and purchase in order to make these meals as close to what these recipes say. Again, you guys know I'm an advocate about using what you have. Don't be such a stickler. You know, everybody's dishes don't have to be the same. The only exception to that is if I am baking, I definitely try to stay as close to the recipe as possible, at least the first go round. And if it doesn't work out, then I make tweaks um, that I feel like would make that recipe better or, you know, take things out that I don't like in the recipe and add substitutions there. But when it comes to just regular old everyday cooking, guys, you can do whatever you want because it's your dish, it's your family, and no one likes the exact same thing the exact same way. So now that I have my meals all decided, um, and just as a re really, really quick recap, that m those four meals that I plan on making this week, maybe I'll get all four, maybe I won't, but they are this pesto chicken tortellini, this one pot penne pasta with turkey and spinach, these low carb Thai turkey wraps, and this baked Caesar chicken recipe. Now I am just going to go to um, my planner or my paper or whatever I have at the time um, and make sure that I have all these ingredients. So we're just going to switch over from the screen to me recording on paper. Okay, so here I have my laminated grocery list. And so on one side here, I have um, just categories that you would have in your grocery store. Um, and then on the other side, I just have the week itself. So if I wanna plan out which days I'm gonna have each meal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I have that. I don't use this all the time because honestly, um, 
things are very fluid on a week to week basis and I just have to do things when I have the time to do it. But this is a good just um, roadmap or plan to have and you just like changing up when you need to. But so first we're going to start off with the Caesar chicken. And so what I simply do is I pull up the recipe and I look at the ingredients. So I see here that it needs or calls for four chicken breasts, boneless skinless chicken breasts, one and a half cups of Parmesan cheese that has been grated, um, a half a cup of sour cream, which is optional, and a cup of Caesar salad dressing. So right off the bat, I know that I have the meat, so there's no need to write it down. I have a little bit of Parmesan crusted, I'm sorry, Parmesan cheese. I made Parmesan crusted chicken a couple weeks ago. So um, I actually do not have enough of that. So under my dairy, I am going to go ahead and write in grated parm cheese. Okay, so that I know to grab that when I'm out. I do have sour cream, so I do not actually need to get any additional sour cream, and I need Caesar salad dressing. So I am going to just plug that in under, I'm gonna do it under dairy as well. So um, Caesar salad dressing, even though I'm pretty sure it may not have a lot of dairy in it, but I am going to put it there. All right, so that's all I need there. So I am just going to go ahead and go to the next um, dish that I plan on making, which is going to be the pesto chicken tortellini with asparagus, cherry tomatoes, and um, pesto, I think. I don't know, I stopped. I moved the screen, so it didn't say, oh, wait. Pesto chicken tortellini and veggies, okay. So this one is going to be a hard sell for my family, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you this, but sometimes you have to at least open the door for them to try new things, even when it's out of their comfort zone. So I'm gonna do this with this. Um, my kids are not sticklers for asparagus, but they will eat it if I press it. Asparagus, okay, I know we're out of that, I need that. This calls for one pound of chicken, boneless, skinless chicken thighs. I have enough chicken for this meal as well. Um, it says sun-dried tomatoes. I'm skipping sun-dried tomatoes because if I'm gonna put whole tomatoes in here, that is going to be enough for me to try to get them to um, take. I know I need pesto. And let's see here, this says basil pesto, so I'll just put basil. It may or may not have it when I go to the store and get it, but I'm just gonna get a pesto. I need some cherry tomatoes. So, put those in there. And let's see here, some tortellini. So, let's do torta, how do you spell tortellini? Tortellini. Some tortellini noodles for that. Um, so I think that's it. Olive oil, chicken thighs, it says. I may or may not get the chicken thighs. I'm gonna use chicken breasts. I'm not using the chicken thighs because I have chicken breasts and I don't need to, to sub that out. So salt, sun-dried tomatoes, which I said I was gonna skip, asparagus, basil pesto, cherry tomatoes, and the tortellini. Okay, so I think I'm good there. And now we are gonna go to the next recipe here, which is this one pot penne, one pot penne pasta with turkey spinach. So we're gonna pull that up. Sorry guys, I wish I could record this at the same time, but you know, it's a little fancy and I really don't know if I can do that. I have to test it out prior to trying to just jump on here and do it. So um, canola oil, I'm not gonna buy that. I have olive oil. We have plenty of ground turkey. It says it needs kosher salt, ground cumin, a teaspoon of, of oregano. I think I dropped my bottle of oregano. So I'm gonna get some oregano dried oregano. 
uh, ground pepper, crushed pepper flakes, um, onion, red bell, pe red bell pepper. I have some of that. Uh, garlic cloves, can of diced tomatoes, I have that. Chili pasta, penne pasta. Let's see, penne pasta. Uh, chicken broth, I have that. I have heavy cream. I need some baby spinach. And some shredded Monterey Jack cheese. All right, so it cut off on me because my card was full. I had to delete some things that I had forgotten to delete. So I'm not sure where it actually cut off, but I'm simply just going through this, um, this one pot pasta with ground turkey and spinach. And I have recorded everything that I would need in order to get to complete this one. Um, and so my last, last one here that I plan on making for the week, if I can get to all four, is a Thai turkey lettuce wrap. And so essentially I'm just gonna do this with this recipe, the same thing with this recipe as well. I'm just gonna go through the ingredient list on this recipe and make sure that I have it. So it says we need fish sauce. I have fish sauce. I have rice vinegar. Um, I have sesame oil, pepper flakes, and it says one sweetener, which is optional. I have that. Two pounds of ground turkey. I have that. Minced garlic. I do need to get more minced garlic. And um, ginger, grated ginger root. I do not have fresh ginger, but I have the ginger paste, which I'm just gonna use as a substitute. And it says soy sauce, and I have low sodium soy sauce. Now, as far as the vegetables, it looks like I'm gonna need some type of lettuce. And this is either gonna be butter or romaine for me. Um, just fill that in. And it looks like two cucumbers. I'll go ahead and write cucumber down and a half carrots which it doesn't call for carrots but i'll probably just slice it up and try to make it and i think that's it so i don't have to get very much for this guys um i'm just gonna roll with it and this is what i have so this is essentially how i go through and when i meal plan um and again i don't do it every week i need to get better with it and my plan is to at least do this once a week for you guys so that one, you will have an option because you'll see what I'm making the next week. And if you feel like this is something that your family would eat, you can definitely use it. I'll have the recipes linked in the description box so that you can go to these exact recipes and get the ingredient list and step-by-step -step instructions if you would like. Um, and two, this is also gonna help me be accountable to make sure that I'm not just winging it every week because I am definitely approaching into, I think not just me, but we're all approaching into this new season of virtual learning and having to be at home with the kids and less time. Um, and with me, I have the addition of the baby coming. So I'm having to really kind of go back to what used to work for me so that I um, am less stressed because, you know, here soon I won't have two independent kids. I'll have two independent kids and one very dependent infant. So um, I have to find a system that's going to really work for me in my household so that I'm able to manage things. Um, with as least amount of stress as possible. And I know things are gonna get a little stressful here with me having to homeschool kids. Um, not really homeschool, but it is kind of homeschooling because I have to be watching my kids and making sure they're getting their lesson and understanding. So again, I say all of that to share this with you. I hope it's beneficial for you. Um, I'm, I know it'll be beneficial for me. But if you definitely enjoyed the video, definitely, you know, give it a thumbs up, um, like, share, subscribe, like I always say. Let me know if you enjoyed it so that I'll, you know, continue to do these and just try to get more versatility out there to you guys for easy 
uh, meals for working moms. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being a subscriber. If you are one and if you are not, please go ahead and hit that button before you leave the channel so that you don't miss any upcoming videos. So until the next time, guys, I'll see you soon. You have a great day. Be blessed. Bye-bye.